We are talking about analyzing radical and rational functions, lesson number one. And we're going to start with radical functions. But in this unit, we'll, we will graph and analyze radical functions, determine solutions to equations with a single radical. We'll also discuss how to transform radical functions using the standard y equals square root of x. And we'll also graph and analyze rational functions and determine solutions to rational equations. A radical function is a function which contains a radical. And usually we're talking about it's not just the coefficient that has the radical. It involves the variable as well. The simplest radical function is y equals the square root of x. In this lesson, we'll analyze the graph and we'll also do some transformations. And you'll see the familiar y minus k is equal to a f of b x minus h. Now here I said f, but here this is the square root. And the f of x here we're talking about is the square root of x. So we'll work with transformations with the square root function. Let's analyze the function y equals the square root of x. And what we mean by analyze is discuss the characteristics of the function and so that we can recognize it. There's certain characteristics of the function that help us to see that it is a square root function. And so we'll look at those now. So let's use a table of values and then plot the points according to the grid that we have here. And we'll see what it looks like. So what we're trying to do is we're saying we said that y was equal to the square root of x. We said that y was equal to the square root of x. Then let's use these x coordinates here, these numbers, as inputs and see what y ends up being. So we can use our calculator to do that. And if we did the first one, we would get an error because this is undefined. We also get an undefined value when we plug in negative 1. If we do plug in 0, the square root of 0 is 0. If we use 1, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4. So we chose some good input values here. Now let's plot these points using x, y type of plotting. So we have 0, 0, and I skipped these two, but we can't actually show these points here on, on this graph because there's none. we can't define where it is. Here we have 0, 0, and then 1 is 1 right there. And then when x is 4, then y is 2. When x is 9, then y is 3. And when x is 16, y is 4. So what it ends up looking like is this. And that's my best attempt there. If we think about it, if we turn it sideways like this, it kind of looks like half a parabola, but it's going this way. So we have this action happening. Now let's explain why the domain of the function y equals square root x is not the set of the real numbers. Well, we tried using we tried using like negative four as an input, but it gave us no y value. It was an undefined y value, or error, error on a calculator, but it means that's, in most cases, it means it's undefined. Well, we tried using negative 4 as an input, and that was undefined. But, so negative 4 is not a valid input. And neither is negative 1. Well, that means then, even if we take everything on this side, we can use negative 5, negative 8, and so on. In fact, no negative x will work. Even if we're talking about you know rational numbers or even real numbers, anything that x where x is less than 0 will not work. So it means then that there's a restriction on the domain of x. The set of acceptable x values don't include those values that are negative. So what is the domain then? We talk about the domain being the set of x values where we get a valid y value as a result and that will only happen when x is greater than or equal to 0 but x can be any real number. What about d? Let's state the range of the function y equals the square root of x. Now we're talking about the range we're talking about the range, we mean y values. So how do the y values look? And most of the range will be done visually. 
here we can see that it starts at zero and then only goes up from there and I'll keep going that way we presume so here this is all the positive y values with that y equals zero so it seems then the range is y such that y is greater than or equal to zero where y can be any real number so here the y values we're talking about the range so we're talking about y values the range of y then if we look we have y can only be positive numbers and the number zero so y is greater than or equal to zero and y is any real number now what about transforming the fun the radical function well if we're talking about transforming this function from y equals the square root of x to y minus k equaling a square root of b times x minus h and it's very similar to how we thought about transformations in other units where we have a definition for the original function and then a b h and k somehow transform that function in a certain way so let's take a look at the table that summarizes the, the connection between the transformations the replacements for x and y and the resulting equations here we have a vertical translation where y is replaced with y minus k and so the equation we'll get is y minus k is equal to f of x or y equals f of x plus k and here I'm going to write in this particular case it would be the square root of x plus k now horizontal translation will have x is replaced with x minus h and so we have y equals f of x minus h what we mean here is that the bracket x minus h is the input so here we have y is equal to the square root of x minus h in this case if we have a reflection in the x-axis that means y's are become their opposites in sign and so we have negative y is equal to f of x or y equals negative f of x so we have y is equal to the negative square root x if we have a reflection in the y-axis we're talking about x changing to their opposite sign so y is equal to f of negative x we have y is equal to the square root of negative x and here you'll find something interesting about the domain what about the reflection in the line y equals x we have x replaced with y y replaced with x we have x is equal to f y or in case of an inverse function we have y is equal to f inverse of x and in that case you would do something like this x is equal to the square root of y and then continue to solve for y it would result in something like y is equal to x squared but with a domain restriction so y equals x squared with a domain restriction we could also say what about a vertical stretch about the x-axis well y is replaced with 1 over a times y so we have 1 over a y is equal to f of x or y equals a times f of x remember f of x is the radical function so you can say this is a times the square root of x and the horizontal stretch about the y-axis we have x is replaced with bx we have y is equal to f of bx bx being the input here this is y is equal to the square root of bx now to build the equation then we have y minus k is equal to a square root of b bracket x minus h from y square root of x we should probably use this convention where the transformations we're talking about stretches first perform stretches first then reflections and then translations so let's take a look at class example one and in each case let's describe the series of transformations required to transform the graph of y equals the square root of x to the graph of the given function make a rough sketch on the graph uh, provided and state the domain and range of the function and then we can use a graphing calculator to verify so we have y minus 4 is equal to square root of x plus 2 here I know we're talking about the y being replaced with y minus 4 but I'm going to think of it about it like this we have the square root of x plus 2 then plus a k or plus 4 now here I'm going to just say that the a value is still 1 looks like the b value is still 1 so we have just 1 times x plus 2 it looks like the h value is negative 2 and the k value is equal to positive 4. 
Let's interpret these parameter values now. We have b is equal to 1, a is equal to 1, so there's no change there. h is equaling negative 2 seems to suggest that we have two t units to the left of a horizontal translation. We also have a k of plus 4, which means it's 4 units up as a vertical translation. Let's now make a rough sketch of this. We have our standard graph y equals the square root of x and we're going to move 2 to the left and so if we go 2 to the left, let's go 1, 2 and so it looks something like this, right? That's rough. But remember we're also going 4 units up so 1, 2, 3, 4 is going to look something like something like this. Now here when we're talking about four units up here, we're talking about this line being y equaling positive four. So it starts right there at, and this is two to the left here. So here we have this, this is y minus four is equal to square root of x plus two right here. Now that we're looking at the graph and the equation as well, we can talk about the domain and the range. So if we talk about the domain here, the domain is all the acceptable x values. Now remember that normally, let's write it over here, normally the domain is equal to the very original. It's x such that x is greater than or equal to zero, with x being any real number, right? But now, because of the transformation of two units to the left, the domain has shifted two units to the left as well. So here since it started at zero and above, then the new domain is going to be x such that x is greater than or equal to now zero to the left of zero is negative two and x is now any real number still. Okay, what if we were to talk about the original dom domain? So the original range is are so it's y such that y was greater than or equal to zero. Now with the range being this way, then we're also now moving this function four units up. So here the new range, range here, is going to be y such that y is greater than, there's no reflection here, so it's still greater than or equal to and we have zero, 0 plus 4 units up from 0. That is going to be now positive 4. And y is still any real number. So here you can see that the domains have changed depending on how you transform the function. A horizontal translation did affect the domain in this case because it started at a particular spot. It wasn't infinite. Again, with the arrange starting at a particular spot, then moving the function up four units affected that range as well. Let's now verify everything on a calculator. So here is our calculator, and we have y equals, we'll take the square root of x so that we have a reference point, and then now here's a slightly tricky part. We have y minus 4 is equal to the square root of x plus 2. But well, we need to write it so that y is isolated. So y2 here is equal to the square root of x plus 2, and then we have to add 4. So this is what we're going to put into our calculator. We have square root of x plus 2, and then we have plus 4 outside of the square root. And let's graph that. So there's the normal square root of x function. This is our new function and that looks like our graph somewhat and so we're happy with that. Taking a look at part b we have 2y is equal to the square root of negative x and here y was replaced with 2y here but I'm going to just rearrange this dividing both sides by 2 and y is going to equal 1 half times our negative square root of negative x. Okay, that way I can treat it very much like I did in the transformations unit where it was a times f of x. 
then I can know that this a here was equal to one half, which tells me this is a vertical stretch by a factor of a half. The next thing, it looks like we had our original x be replaced with negative x. And if that's the case, x being replaced with negative x, or in other words, the b value is equal to negative 1, is going to be a reflection about the y-axis. The x's are going to switch from positive to negative. So we have a reflection happening here. So let's use a vertical stretch by half. Here is the original graph. And it's going to be half each time. Something like that. Oops. I think I went a little high here, but this is half of each one of these heights is half of the height right there. Okay, and then we're going to reflect it. So this should have went this way, like so. So I'm just going to try and cut the, that a little bit so that we can see it's dotted. And this is the graph we're talking about. So this is 2y is equal to the square root of negative x. All right, let's talk about the domain. The original domain, I guess, is still x is greater than 0, right? And the original range is y is greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0. So when we have this vertical stretch by half, that doesn't affect the domain here. And if we look at the reflection, though, a reflection about the y-axis means that now instead of having x being greater than or equal to zero, we're talking about only this part. This this is the graph only, not this part. So here, this because this was before the reflection. So the domain of this graph is x such that x is less than or equal to zero, with x being any real number. So we have x is less than or equal to 0, x being any real number. This is because of the reflection about the y-axis. When we talk about the range, we have y such that y is still greater than or equal to 0. Even though we had a vertical stretch by a half, since y went from 0 all the way to infinity, we think half of a very, very large number is still a very, very large number and it still can continue to go up. Let's take a look at part C. We have y plus 5 is equal to negative the square root of x. So I'm going to replace this with y is equal to negative square root of x minus 5. That way it looks a little bit more like a f of x plus k. And here we can see a is equal to negative 1. The k value is equal to negative 5. So it looks like we are talking about a reflection. If a is negative, it's a reflect about the x-axis. And k is negative 5, so that is going to be 5 units down, a vertical translation of 5 units down. Great, let's do that. Reflect about the x-axis, so that's going to be over here. I'm just doing a dotted line just to show you the temporary. And then 5 units down. So one, two, three, four, five. And again, it's going to look like, like so. And there is our y plus 5 is equal to negative square root x. Now let's talk about the domain. Remember, original domain, x was greater than or equal to 0. Original range, y was greater than or equal to 0. And what do we have here? A reflect about the x-axis. So does the domain change? No, visually you can see that x still starts at 0 and goes on. So the domain here is going to be x such that x is still greater than or equal to 0. x can be any real number. Well, but what about the range? The range, the original range was y is greater than or equal to 0. And then we have 5 units down, a vertical translation. Well, that won't, oh, that will change. That will change the range, including this reflection too. Now the range is going to be y is 
less than or equal to zero. And even further, five, five units down, the range now is going to be y such that y is less than or equal to, let's see, five units down from zero, one, two, three, four, five. y is going to be less than or equal to negative five, where the y's could be any real number. Let's verify that on our calculator. We can say, so the original there, Square root of x, oh, there's a negative there. And then minus 5, minus 5. Let's graph that. So the original looks good. And way down here at negative 5, it starts going this way. That is what we see there. Good. Let's now take a look at part d. We have y is equal to 3 times the square root of 2x minus 1. Looks like here, this is an a value, a is equal to three. And now if we go into this radicand here, we have two x minus one, and I'm going to factor because in the original transformation uh, formula, we have to factor that b out before we can use it. So this is x minus a half, and then that is, if we're talking about that, that means that b is equal to 2, and then we also have an h value that is equal to positive 1 half. So a is 3, b is 2, h is 1 half. This a means it's a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. This b means that it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 half. Because remember, it's opposite of the b value, right? Here with a, it's a vertical stretch by what that a says. And here, this is a horizontal stretch by 1 over b. And we have this one. This is going to be a horizontal translation of a half unit to the right. OK, let's go in order here. A vertical stretch by 3. So here, this would be 0, 0. But by 3 stays there as an invariant point because it's on the x-axis. But this 1, 1 will now become 1, 3. So 1, 2, 3, something like that. And then we have this, that thing happening after the vertical translation. Then we have a horizontal translation by a half which brings it closer to the y-axis. So this will be, maybe I'll do it in a different color. Now you have this thing happening here, and then it's half of that. So it's right over there. And then, after that is a horizontal translation to the right by a half unit. So instead of being at zero, zero here, it's now at a half zero. So right there, but still, going this way so see it right there oops so this is our y is equal to 3 square root of 2x minus 1 taking a look at the domain here it looks like the domain has started it was started at 0 0 that was the original domain and the only thing that affected, you have a horizontal stretch by a half, but still it goes on forever. So that would, half of zero is still zero. But if we take a look at the horizontal tra translation of half to the right, then this domain now is going to be x such that x is greater than or equal to a half instead of zero. And then we have x is any real number. Okay, what about the range, the range is y such that y is greater than or equal to 0 is the original. A vertical stretch by 3 still remains from 0 and up, so this is still remaining the same at y is greater than or equal to 0. Let's now talk about class example number 2. 
and let's determine the domain and range of the function y equals a times the square root of bx if we're talking about a being positive and b being positive, both of them being positive. You can see where this is going. We have a is negative, but b is positive. If we have a is positive and b is negative, or a is negative and b is also negative. Before we see what happens, let's just see the domain. Remember, the domain of the original, say the original domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 0. And the original range is going to be y is greater than or equal to 0. So if we stretch, here this a means a vertical stretch. a means a vertical stretch. And b also means, not also, but b means a horizontal stretch. OK, so if the original domain was x is greater than or equal to 0, and we have a horizontal stretch of it, then it's going to stretch times a certain factor. Some factor times 0 is still 0, and then it would go on to infinity. So in this case, the original domain, the domain is still x such that x is greater than or equal to 0, and x is any real number. And we say, what about the vertical stretch, though? Well, the vertical stretch will not affect the domain, because we're only stretching y values at those particular x locations. What about the range? The range here, if it's a vertical stretch, and A is a positive vertical stretch. There's no reflection. That means what it was positive will still stay positive. And we talk about a vertical stretch. Invariant points happen on the x-axis. So when y is equal to 0, it'll still be 0. So this stays that it's a non-negative number. What about B? If A is less than 0, suggest then a reflection sorry, about the x-axis. So it's flipping down. B is still positive, so it doesn't change the domain here. But A being less than 0 is a reflection about the x-axis. That means it's going to affect the range. So the domain is still x. x is greater than or equal to 0, x being any real number. But the range, because of this reflection down, you get y is y is less than or equal to 0, with y being any real number. Let's see if we can just do a sketch for each of these. So a sketch, you'll have this still at 0, so we'll make it big, and then it just goes this way still. If we have a reflection, if a is less than 0, you might still have a vertical stretch, but instead of having the original go, instead of having the original look this way, it's going to look something like this. OK, what about C? If A is positive, but B is negative. Well, if A is positive, then it would still not change the ra range very much. But if B is negative, then that means you're going to have a reflection about the y-axis. B less than 0 means a reflection about the y-axis. So instead of looking at something like that, you are looking at something like this. Well, if that's the case, that's going to change the domain. So the domain here will be x such that x is less than or equal to 0. And it'd still be real numbers. But what about the range? The range is still it's a positive value, so positive times y values is still going to be positive y values. So the range is still y, y is greater than or equal to 0. And for d, both of them are negative. So that means you're going to have a reflection this way, and you're also going to have a reflection this way. So you end up something like this. Now from the original, maybe I'll put that in a, a dotted line you'd see that the domain has switched over to the other side and the range has switched. So the domain here is going to be x such that, 
x is less than or equal to 0. x can still be real numbers. But the range is y such that y is also less than or equal to 0, with y being any real number. So be familiar with how, we're, how the reflections do change the domain or the range, depending on whether the negative is part of the B value or part of the A value. I'm returning now to my trusty Desmos app here, and I'm going to show you you have the y equals square root of x in this red that you can see. And now I'm going to show you the effects of A and B. Now I already showed you with sketches with the pen, but here you can see it in real time. So here's a where a sorry y is equal to a times the square root of bx. If a is equal to one and b is equal to one, then this is what you have. Now let's see what happens as we take a and move it to negative. So when we move it to negative, you can see here's vertical stretches happening, but you can see that it takes the range and brings it down underneath zero. So here we can go through actually, let's see what happens. We'll go through each of these. So A says both are positive. So we can move both of them here at the same time. And we will move this one. And you can see that if I move A and B at positive values, you can still see that still along this side of the Y axis. Now in part B it says A is less than zero, but B remains positive, so we'll keep B there. Actually, we'll just bring it back a little bit. And then make A go negative. And you can see when A is negative, you still have the domain the same, but the range has changed. And then we can see for A being positive, let's move A positive, but B is negative, so we'll move it over to negative. And here you can see that now it's the domain that has changed and the range is still the same. And if both are negative, so B is already negative, we'll make A negative as well. And you can see now this was the original graph, we'll take that out. And the domain has changed to this side, the range has also changed to this side. You are ready for your assignment now and I will see you in class.